Okay, when you're ready. Okay, dokey. Hi, it's Todd of Todd's Workshop and Todd Cutler here, and today I'm here with Todd's instant Legolas device. Oh, hang on. Isn't that supposed to be Jorg Spravs? No, not today. So Jorg sent me this instant Legolas behind, and he was challenged really on YouTube to say, oh, well, it doesn't work with medieval technology and they couldn't have done it back in the day. Well, he sent it to me so I could have a go at making it with medieval technology. And this is what I came up with. Let me show you its features. <laughs> so, here we are. I've used ash for most of it. Ash is tough, it's strong. So very suitable wood for this. This is boxwood at the front, the, the spring lever and the main plate here. So horn makes a great spring. The trigger is antler. So you can see that's, that's uh, an antler trigger there and that's just for the spring that pushes down on it. So the bolts that Jorg sent for me were 14 grams, skinny little things. And I've done two versions which are considerably longer, but heavier. So these are 12 mil, half inch diameter shafts. Uh, some nice medieval heads there and some modern ones on some wooden fletchings and some feather fletch. The reason that I've done the different fletch types is really I don't know what's gonna work. So we're gonna try that out. Then what I've also done is I've made the whole thing field strippable. So all of this front headstock component here, this all dismantles, it allows you to remove the bow. There was a couple of issues I didn't like about Yorgs, that the bow was not easy to get in and out, it was lashed on, and you had to brace the bow in the device. So I've made this one here, I'll just show you the bottom of the trigger system. You can swivel these little catches out the way, and you can get the string in and out through that gap there. And that allows you to string the bow separate to the device, which is, if you're dealing with heavy bows, and that's kind of one of the things we're talking about, that's really quite important. I've put these lash cords here, which might look a little bit out of place. I could have done a nice metal clamp fitting, but then it would only work with one bow. And I don't know, maybe I want a 40 pound bow, maybe I want 120 pound, 140 pound bow. I, it had to be variable. Bows are different shapes. This cord system here, with a tightening screw at the back here, that just allows the whole system to be very, very variable. I've lined it all with bone. So little bone runners. They didn't have the words that we have. They didn't have the, the maths and the thinking that we had, but they had the same brains. They understood friction. They might not have had the words for it, but they understood what it was about. So it's not wood on wood like Jorg's one. But what you also need to remember about Jorg's version is it's not really a prototype. It's more a proof of concept. He's showing the idea and saying, it works, great. If and when Jorg eventually makes that, he's not gonna make it in plywood. He's, it'll be a, a beautifully manufactured item. This here is much closer to a prototype than a medieval prototype. I've done a little bit of decoration on the ironwork here, because you know what, why not? Nothing in the medieval world was not decorated. Uh, nice pretty little site here. Um, so you've got windage on there, little marks for elevation. So really I've, I've approached it by trying to make it a long lived, nicely made object. This could have been made with medieval technology much more temporarily if you like, but I think there is a very particular use for this by very particular people. And that was well-trained, efficient, experienced, competent archers. Those are the people I think would have used this, but under certain circumstances, not under all circumstances. I would love to be able to shoot this for you, but actually I'm not the man for the job because this is my 95 pound bow and I can shoot it just about. But what I can't do is shoot it fast. And if the instant legless is about anything at all, it really is about the speed of shooting those arrows out. So I need somebody who can shoot a much heavier bow and doesn't have to worry, struggle with shooting 95. And that man is Joe Gibbs. Some of you may know who he is. For those who don't, Joe Gibbs is the only person I know on the planet who can shoot and does shoot regularly a 200 pound long bow. He has a company called Hillbilly Bows, makes beautiful bows, but he also shoots fantastically. So he shoots accurately, and quickly, heavy bows. But he worked with us last year on the Arrows versus Armour video where he shot 160 pound bow at a very accurately made breastplate and we watched the results. If you don't know that film, go check it out. Really interesting. And also you'll really see with the traditional longbow, Joe's shooting style, which is needed for the heavyweight bows. It, it's interesting, it's different to the modern style. But he's gonna shoot this 95 pound. He's gonna cycle the arrow through fast. We're gonna see what happens. So first of all, we're gonna give him Jorg's original device with a whopping 35 pound bow on it and just see what he makes of it. 
he's not come across one before. I mean, how many people have? And then we're taking this down to the range and we're gonna shoot. Right, Joe, I've just handed you Jorg's original instant Legolas that he sent to me. First shots. Okie dokie, let's try this. So we're on a 30 pound bow or 35 or something. Right. Yeah, that's it. That's nice. Yeah, quick. It's very quick. Yeah, have to see, see what it's like <laughs> with a bigger one. Yeah, let's, let's feed a big bow in there. Yeah. So, um, what we'll do then is I'll introduce you to the one I've built. Okay. And we'll put uh, my one in, which is about a 95, something okay. like that. Yeah. And see how you get on with yeah, that. Yeah, let's, let's do that. Right, Joe, first time with Todd's version of the Instant okay. Legolas. I don't know, I've not shot it with a bow this weight, so I don't know what's going to happen. Let's see how she goes then. Yeah, okay. let's see. All right, good luck. Right. Oh, I'll tell you what, that's... Taking a bit of getting used to. Yeah, because this comes back and then pushes your thumb oh, does off. it? Uh, design flaw. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Right. Quite well, a it hard works. Work. <laughs> hard work. <laughs> yeah. So, well, I mean, tell me about it. So, um, just the last, last bit, making sure you can reach that yeah. trigger with your thumb. Okay. It's maybe a little bit short, so when you're you're pulling on it, you're, uh, you're sort of like this. Yeah, yeah. So you've yeah. got a. Okay. You see? Yeah. Because okay, because you're using like first crease of your fingers. Yeah, yeah like this. Okay, because on the light bow, it didn't didn't matter. Didn't matter. Yeah. Um, the second one is. When you normally pull a bow, you're holding it like this. Yeah. And that doesn't so work. So it, it, it's getting used to that mm. with an open grip coming around. Okay. Well, we could we could um, try an experiment actually and lose that front piece. Okay. This time we've moved to the feather fletch bolts just to see how they work. Uh, I haven't actually shot them out this yet, so we'll have a look at that. What we've also done is taken off the foregrip on here. Um, I'll come and talk about that, but Joe wasn't entirely comfortable with it. Uh, so we're going to lose it because he doesn't need it and see if that makes his shooting any easier with it. Uh, so let's have a go. Take it away, Joe. Okie dokie. Nice. Yeah, it's much better. Oh, that's interesting because I kind of liked it. But I liked it on a much lighter bow. Okay. And and actually, you know, what you're saying there is that you grip the bow. Need that positive grip on it. You to, can't uh, do it yeah. with that handle. Yeah, oh, that worked a lot better that time, definitely. So the instant legless mm. medieval style with a 95 pound bow is possible. So we'll do that a few more times and then we'll see if we can uh, up the bow weight if we're all comfortable with it. So last year, Joe and I made another film, a longbow versus crossbow, and it was to do with the rate of shooting and accuracy. So it's another film, go check that one out. But in that one, Joe did a speed trial with six arrows, fast as he could. And what we're gonna do now, we've only got five here, but we'll put side by side the first five shots that he did last year, and then we'll look at it with the five shots here. So Joe's gonna run for speed on this one as well. Okay, when ready. are you ready? ready? Let's go. Okay, uh, in case you're curious, eight seconds, five eight, shots. was it. That's not bad. That's pretty quick. And... Makes you work for it. Yeah, I mean, in terms of accuracy, uh, just gonna pan the camera. Does it make you work, you say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, so if we look at accuracy there, so, yeah. you know, this is what, third time Joe's ever shot this thing. And, uh, yeah, I mean, what's that? Three out of the five are going to be on somebody's chest yeah, at 10 yards. Yeah, so. so, you know, not stunning. Um, but, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Joe's laughing there. So, yeah, sorry about that, Joe. I did, okay. say, I did say off. not stunning shooting, but this is what? Third time you shot the Yeah, film, yeah, right? third time, yeah. It was, it was fairly hard work to do the five shots. You're in a slightly different position, so it makes you work a bit harder. I mean, I'm guessing that with a little bit of practice, 
you would be fine switching between two techniques yeah. on this. It's just this is like moment one and it's yeah, a little bit that's weird. That's exactly it. We've got a set of sights on there. Okay. So, so let's use the sights and yep. go for a bit of accuracy. Okay, let's try that. Take it away, Joe. So he's not going super fast, but you know, he's going at a good pace. All right, let's just spin it around, see what we got. The last one is the one bottom left, but the top four are certainly within a dinner plate, so they're within a guy's chest. It's not very far here, it's 12, 15 yards, 15 meters, something like that. But again, as we said, you know, sights are not Joe's thing. I can tell you now, if he was shooting his own bow without sights on it, he would be more accurate than that this distance. I mean, what would you expect actually for, you, for yourself at this distance, oh, Joe? Six inch group, 15 centimeters? Uh, yeah, at least, um, maybe a bit tighter. You know, something like that. But I mean, this is this is interesting because it's all these things that we've been chatting about, actually, partly that you've missed off camera, that we'll have a little chat with and we'll, we'll expand that in another film. Who would use it? Where would you use it? We'll, we'll deal with all this in another film. But brilliant. Thank you very much. Okay. So what we're going to do now, we are going to move up from the 95 to what weight are we going to go now? Uh, 120, 125, about, about that sort of draw weight yeah. and see if I can do that. So this is another Hillbilly yeah. Bows special? Yeah, another Hillbilly Bows, yeah. So it'll be a hill, Hillbilly Bows Todd Jorg Sprav concoction. Right, let's do it. Let's crack on. 120 pound bow. Joe's going to take it a little bit steady because, you know, that's, it's a big bow by anybody's standards and cycling it through really fast. You know, we'll see how we go. Yeah, so. we'll see. All right, lovely. So go for it when you're ready, okay. Joe. Well, when I'm out of the way. Yeah, yeah. That's hard work. Uh, you look like you're struggling right at the end. Yeah, that was uh, much harder. I would say the bow feels 20, 30, maybe even 40 pounds heavier than it, it should do. I see that there's two reasons. One, physiologically, you're in the wrong position. You're not in the position you're used to shooting. The other is, of course, friction. Yeah, um, I think uh, maybe a bit of both, to be honest. On the lighter weight bow, I, I was fine with this whole setup and the one that Jorg sent to me felt fine. Yeah. I haven't shot a heavy one so I can't really comment but it might be that if the whole system was flipped over because I did it this side because I thought it needed to be but actually yeah. after making it maybe it doesn't. That's um, prototyping for you. Yeah it, it could be that um, or the fact that it's just uh, you've got your hand in a slightly different position so then uh, all your arm, your muscles in your arms are, are slightly different yeah. which then they've not because it's here, be, not here. Yeah, here, not here. But all of this might be stuff that you get used to. Yeah, I mean, we can't, we can't know until you shoot this for a week or two weeks yeah. or whatever. Uh, I, de I definitely want, wouldn't want to shoot anything heavier. So, so this is 120 and that's enough? Yeah, that's enough, definitely. But I mean, equally, it was enough. I mean, they're hitting hard, you know, you can see it, you yes. can hear it. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, all right, great. Yeah. The instant Legolas is intriguing seeing one guy shooting, but watching five guys, well, with the magic of editing, here we go. Check this out. Okay, yep. okay. Okay, okay. I'm back to sum up. And it was really good actually working with Joe on this because he gave me some really good insights that I wasn't expecting. But we have changed some things, like removed this targeting handle, this front handle, for instance, which works with lighter weight bows, doesn't really work with the heavyweight. Joe felt he had to grip it. He felt the sights were superfluous. I kind of feel that a little bit too, because I think, and we're gonna come back to talk about this, I think this is all about a really good existing archer, a competent soldier, not about people who don't know anything about anything. Competent archers don't need sights, they shot instinctively. So I think that's not required. He could shoot 120 pound off it, and we saw it, and he shot, you know, pretty fast. But it was tiring for him. It was not as easy. We'll, we can't quite get to the bottom. Is it friction? Is it a different position? I don't know. But he could do it, and he could lay down a good suppressing fire for 
the five shots. There's certainly no problem with that with a good weight bow. Both him and I feel that it was better suited to slightly lighter bows. Maybe a 90 pound worked really well. You know, Joe could do that. I can do a, a 40 without a problem. I imagine I could do a 60. Um, but here we are. So thanks so much to Joe from Hillbilly Bows. Um, there's a link to his uh, webpage in, in the description. Go check it out. He is amazing. His bows are amazing. And then the last thing is, there's more to come on this actually. I hope I haven't bored you with you know, another instant Legolas film. But the bottom line is it makes you think about history. It makes you think about technology and how they built things and how they use things. So Joe and I are going to sit down in the next film and have a how would they have used it discussion. And then I'm going to come back for a super geeky look at this machine, looking at every little element. Um, just how it's done, why it was done. So that'll be long and boring and only for the Legolas fans out there or the medieval technology fans. And then of course, you guys have come back with the assist films, you know, the assist challenge about how you can do that with medieval technology at the front. And there's been some good stuff there. And there's one absolute forerunner, which I think is brilliant. And all of this, it's teaching us stuff. And you know what? That's why I'm here. And hopefully that's why most of you are here as well. But in the meantime, thanks and bye bye. <laughs>